Are the government and USDA dietary guidelines based on good science? And if not, why? No, it's not really based on the best of science. And I don't mean to say that and question, you know, the scientists who are given their time and they're not paid for this, who get together and study this question, they do. But they're kind of channeled. They're thinking in, in science, we're kind of channeled in certain belief in certain things. If we say something different, uh, we might get in some difficulty. In the case of the dietary guidelines, for example, that's run by a committee who meet together for two or three or four years or so, uh, pull all the information together, and they do this every five years, what, what they think science is saying. If it's the same as what had been said, said five years ago or so forth, they're there working away and get all the information. Then at that particular point in time, it's submitted for public review, at least in the more recent times, for some commentary. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that report that the scientists worked on has to be approved by the Secretary of Agriculture and the Secretary of Health and Human Services. They have the final say. That's a political decision. What is your online course about and how does someone take it? Your our online course called nutritionstudies.org as far as the linkage is concerned. Uh, that was a course I was teaching on campus uh, for a while, for a few years, and, and uh, that's another story. Uh, eventually, it was pulled from the catalog. The guy who did that was the most influential consultant for the dairy industry in the world. He was my supervisor, right? And his successor, they did the same thing. That was a big issue, and I write about it. Uh, but in any case, they pulled out of the catalog. But a bunch of the students I had been teaching liked my course. It was quite popular. There was somewhere between three and 5,000 students who then organized a petition to have it reinstated. They did not succeed. So I said, okay, I'm going to take the course. I'm going to put it in this new online program that was emerging at the university. And so I took it here and put it there. And it's been now taught online in that program for, I don't know, seven, eight years or something like that. I think we've got about 30,000 graduates with certificates. And I'm teaching it as I see it, not as they see it. Because it wasn't, as I say, it wasn't uh, allowed. That caused me a lot of problems. I mean, even today, I will say this on the camera, that I wrote the book, The China Study. I Basically, I'm explaining what I believe nutrition is, not according to what the system says it is. Um, that then, in turn, the book, the university does not list it. The, the book that I, that I published, I think, is, is maybe the most published book in the history of Cornell. Carl Sagan and I were, are the size of our communications, so, so the communication department says we were sort of equal. He was getting about the same attention I was. Uh, but in any case, uh, my book is not now listed by the university. They won't have anything to do with it. You know, yet on the outside, we've sold over three million copies. And that book has been translated into more than 50 foreign languages. That's a world record. That's more than Dr. Atkins had many years ago. So the book is around, it's getting all over the place. But the university wants to pretend it doesn't exist. Do you recommend people with high cholesterol take statin drugs? I, I don't want to be too firm on that. Uh, you know, this is a, in, in part a medical decision. I don't want to interfere in the relationship between the doctor and the patient. And it's not my game, and I'm not allowed to do that anyhow. I, I say that, but in reality, um, you know, I, I wouldn't do it. I had an opportunity once when, when I was told because it tends to run higher in my family than otherwise, and I refused to do it. So I just can only tell what I, I choose to think. And statin drugs, looking at a larger bodies of data, they tend to reduce deaths by maybe at the best 9% over some period of time because they're blocking the cholesterol and doing some other things too. I think that number's high. So there's others say it has no effect. And statins cause side effects. So here we are relying on statin drugs and 85 or $90 million a year business, billion dollar business. And 
you know, we, we can take care of that problem very easily. Why are we taking statin drugs? Chapter 9 of the China study was called, What are Autoimmune Diseases? Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, the autoimmune disease concept, and there are, I don't know, there's 70 to 80 different kinds of so-called autoimmune diseases. It really has to do with the fact that the body is reacting in such a way that it tends to attack itself. And that's usually caused by an immune response. You know, you consume something, the body makes antibodies against that, those antigens, they make antibodies. And uh, the antibodies are usually very specific you know, where they kind of hit things. And then they tend to find something in our bodies, you know, that will start attacking our own tissues. That's what an auto, the autoimmune response is really all about. That's usually triggered. That's oftentimes triggered by food.